Okay, looking at the Ford engine here, it's a Volvo. Um, uh, no sail drive, it has a transmission and shaft. Goes through the uh, uh, Marine Craft uh, uh, shaft seal. Everything looks pretty good here. Uh, ordinarily, pretty, pretty healthy looking engine and installation. New water heater. Right. There's your ground plate for the single sideband radio. Uh, screw on canister ray core and various wires and plumbing bits and pieces. Huh? Um, so this engine here, uh, Hydrolock, seawater in the engine, and uh, my take on that is probably this. Here's your seacock down here for the raw water, which is now closed. It has an above waterline strainer, which is fine. Uh, Hose came back down again, goes into the impeller, which is at the very bottom of the engine over here, through the impeller. Then it comes uh, up this hose right here, and here is an air uh, brake in that hose. I'm not sure if you can see my hand. There you go. And uh, this is supposed to uh, allow air back in to break a siphon. The hose continues and drops down into the heat exchanger and water goes through the heat exchanger out the back end and there is no anti-siphon loop on the back end of the heat exchanger so the raw water breaker goes right into the exhaust elbow and then into the exhaust system. It's an uphill climb to get the exhaust out of the boat. And you can see part of that uphill climb back there, that uh, beige uh, uh, muffler system. So, what probably happened is, this line right here, which is supposed to break the vacuum, is a very long line. It goes all the way around and up and up and up and back there somewhere, and probably climbs high, and it's supposed to allow air in. If that hose gets clogged, or pinched in any way, or even the fact that it's going up and back down again um, and uh, may even have a little a droplet of uh, water in there to, to, uh, to uh, uh, prevent the air from getting through then that could cause the siphon effect. So when the engine stopped running the water ran down this hose here and uh, everything else was primed in the system so it just drew water up through the strainer right through the hoses into the impeller pump up past the anti-siphon brake and back down again went through the heat exchanger and dropped into the exhaust and obviously the exhaust is all uphill so it filled up the exhaust until it overflowed the um, elbow and the water went back into the engine through uh, two open exhaust valves and flooded the engine, hydrolocked it and since it wasn't found right away it seize the engine up. That's it. So both engines uh, require repower on this boat uh, for various reasons according to the broker. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what the other engine's problem is but uh, he just mentioned that to me. So I would assume that's probably correct.